Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for today's webinar, which is sponsored by USDA NIFA through the North Central IPM Center. My name is Will Fulwider. I am the project manager here at the Organic and IPM Working Group. I will be hosting the webinar this afternoon. I'm also pleased to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Gladys Zanotti, director of the Vegetable Systems Trial at the Rodale Institute in Cutstown, Pennsylvania. We will be speaking about her research on flowering insectiary plants as biological control of the striped cucumber beetle. She also evaluates no-till no practices, carbon sequestration, nutrient density, compost formulations, and pest management at the Rodale Institute. She has 28 years experience and holds undergraduate degrees in general agriculture and agriculture engineering, an MS in horticulture from the American University of Beirut, and a PhD in soil fertility from Michigan State University. Before we begin, I would like to go over some brief logistics. Uh, one of the important things to keep in mind is that if you have any questions for the presenter, that we will use the question box um, during the presentation and afterwards. Dr. Zanotti will answer questions in the last 15 minutes of this webinar, and I will moderate those questions. So feel, feel free to type in any questions you have. I will pose them at the end to her, and she will answer those. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available later on the Organic IPM website, as well as on our YouTube channel. By attending today's webinar, you are eligible for one CCA continuing education units in nutrient and pest management. You must be present for the entire webinar to receive those points. If you're watching this webinar live, you'll receive an email in the next few days with a webinar recording, a webinar evaluation, and a link to submit your, your CCA credentials to earn the one CCA CEU, if you have not already done this when you initially registered. This form will be filled out if you're attending the webinar over phone. Now, for a brief announcement before moving forward, we have one last webinar in February, which is yet to be announced. There's no date yet, nor a speaker. We will get those details filled out shortly and make announcements as to when that will be happening and who will be presenting. With that, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Gladys Zanatti to present on her research of the solutions to the striped uh, cucumber beetle. Dr. Zanatti? Hi, thank you, Well, Can you hear me very well from there? Yes, we can hear you great. Great. Uh, thank you, Will, and thank you for inviting me um, for being part of the webinar series organized by the IPM Institute of North America Organics and IPM Working Group. Um, as you said, my topic is about solutions to striped cucumber beetle that attacks our cucurbit crops. And for those who do not know what cucurbit crops include, they include winter squash, gourd, squash, melon, musk melon, watermelon, and um, cucumbers. In the United States, the value of produced cucurbits is about 1.45 billion, and there is a small sliver of that is considered organic. Mainly, it constitutes 17.3% for squash and less than 1% for watermelon. The striped cucumber beetle is considered a major pest. It is a specialist herbivore pest, meaning that it eats and feeds on the plants. And mainly uh, it is specialist because it attacks the cucurbit crops across the northeast of US. The scientific name of this type of cucumber beetle is Acalima vitatum. It belongs to the order Coleoptera. Let's look at the life cycle of this pest. Uh, first, uh, in the spring, early spring, the uh, adults emerge from overwintering. They mate and they feed on the plants, as well as on the flowers. And the female lays the eggs in the soil near the plant roots. This, unlike any other pest, you won't see the egg masses on the leaves or on the underside of the leaves, but they, they are very smart. They put their eggs in the soil near where the larvae will hatch from these egg masses after a week, and they start feeding on the plant roots, so they put them pretty close where the food is. 
In a month, the larvae will turn into pupa and the pupa uh, emerge again as adults uh, in the summer and feed again on the full grown cucurbit crops. And you could see here the larvae, it is in a um, yellow, uh, creamy color, pretty small, and the pupa compared to the penny is even smaller. These uh, second generation of adults will continue feeding on the crops in the fall and they uh, overwinter until the next spring and the life cycle goes on. During that time, the adults really cause a lot of uh, damage to the leaves and they also cause damage to the flowers and the scarring the fruits themselves. So that really helps, um, um, not helps, but it really impacts negatively the marketability for uh, uh, selling these uh, organic, uh, let's say organic uh, cucumbers as premium. So because they have these scars, they will be considered as seconds, as well as it reduces the yield. So the larvae cause the problem on feeding the roots and the adults would be feeding the flower on the flowers and the leaves as well as when this insect is feeding, what it does, it transmits a pathogen called Erwinia trichophila. Only if these pests are infected already with that bacteria. What it does, it, it blocks all the xylem pathway, which uh, transmits uh, to the leaves all the water and the nutrients. When this uh, xylem uh, sap is blocked, meaning the leaves will not continue to get these nutrients and water, and they will start wilting. And that's the symptom that shows here in this photo. And with time, in about two, three weeks, the plants, all the crop will be wilting and uh, succumb to bacterial wilt disease. So the causal damage of that uh, wilt disease is the Arrhenia trichophila. Mostly, the cucumber and the watermelon are the most susceptible to this disease, more than squash. Let's look what could be the common control measures that have been practiced in the organic system, including first the cultural control. Many growers have used crop rotation in their systems as part of their organic management. They also use transplants, small seedlings, instead of direct seeding, so they can expedite the time and the plants will not be affected by the larvae at the beginning of the season. Also, uh, growers have used row covers. They protect their plants, their young seedlings, from the adults from feeding on the leaves or feeding on the flowers themselves. Others have used uh, perimeter trap cropping, uh, mainly blue Hubbard squash, which is shown here in this photo, is uh, vibrant in yellow flowers, and most of the type cucumber beetles will rush if you put them on the perimeter of the of the farm and uh, this type cucumber beetle will rush to those uh, flowers and they will feed and they will love feeding on this crop because also they have more of uh, the cucurbitacin, which is um, a material is in the, uh, gives the, what you call it, the bitterness a little bit to these leaves. And it is mostly high in the hover squash. So, these uh, insects, they require for their activities something called cucurbitacin, so they rush into this Hubbard squash. It is used as a trap cropping as well as a defense for the cash crop. Other growers also have used yellow sticky cards, uh, mainly uh, not only for uh, monitoring the, uh, the emergence of adults in the spring or during uh, the summer, but also to reduce the presence of these striped cucumber beetles because they, these striped cucumber beetles are attracted to yellow color. In addition to cultural control, the growers, the organic growers, have used organic approved insecticides and Although some of them they proved well and some of them not, they, they have also another negative side of it where 
the, these um, organic pesticides will really affect the pollinators. And so growers who are depending, and especially in cucurbits, we require to have the pollinators. It is really important to keep some of the management practices that improve the pollinators rather than uh, reduce these pollinators. Uh, most of the time in the organic management uh, cucumbers, we see more of these bacteria wilt outbreaks than those in the conventional system. During the time that uh, the Pennsylvania Fruit and Vegetable Association uh, meet with the growers, they collect surveys and the results of those surveys show that Organic growers rated two top priorities that are needed for research. These included management of striped cucumber beetle on cucurbits and the other uses of reduced tillage for improving soil health, plus how it can be incorporated in management practices such as uh, uh, cucurbits. So what could be the solutions to this pest? So I thought about it and I said, okay, let me see what the literature has uh, shown before so we can incorporate some of these important findings and design a research project to evaluate what are the potential options for organic growers. So scientists and researchers have published uh, since uh, early on about uh, different topics and mainly here I'm listing the research facts where uh, they said that if they increase vegetation diversity in the agricultural landscape that would reduce the herbivore pest densities. As I said before the striped cucumber beetle is a herbivore pest but we wanted to know what kind of vegetation we could include to help reducing the striped cucumber beetle. Another fact I found that ground beetles and wolf spider feed on cucumber beetle adults, eggs, and larvae. And that I found very interesting to, to think about how I can attract more of these ground beetles and wolf spiders to the site where I want to conduct this experiment and see if that number of striped cucumber beetles are getting reduced. Another fact that I found that in areas where they conducted strip tillage with surface residue, they found more diverse communities of the ground beetles than where there was a full tillage and plastic culture for squash and melon, but was not tested on cucumber organic production. Another fact that was interesting to see that by Smythe and Hoffman, who published in 2010, that organic farms and conventional farms alike in New York have shown high levels of parasitism for the cucumber beetle, mainly by the technet fly, which is shown here in this uh, photo, and the braconoid wasp, which you will see here in this photo. These two uh, parasites, they put their eggs into the body of the striped cucumber beetle. And then when the pupa or the cocoon comes out of it, it really shatters the cucumber beetle. So this is part of a good information about the parasitism could be another biological uh, method that could re reduce the striped cucumber beetle. Another fact I found by Pat et al in 1997 publication that whenever including uh, insector strips that had flowering plants, showed successfully reduction in pest in insect pest. However, this not been uh, tested on organic uh, cucumber production. With these facts, what I did, uh, I got a project running and funded by the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture uh, and the Pennsylvania Vegetable Growers Association and the Frontier Co where the goal of this project was to look into if I include the insector strips and reduce tillage system, would those increase the population of the beneficial insects? Would those reduce the striped cucumber population and thus we will reduce the incidence or eliminate the bacterial incidence? As well as if this system 
combined will increase uh, the predation of the ground uh, beetles, meaning the population and diversity would be high if the wolf spiders and parasitoids. I may not be touching on all these things, but I am uh, putting something together for you today that really helps you understand what are the potential uh, systems that we could use. Let's look at some of the uh, results here, uh, but before that, let's look at the experimental layout. So here, uh, the rye veg is a cover crop that we plant uh, in the fall, and this is a photo was taken in the spring. Along the sides, you will see the insector strips here. They are still early, some of them start flowering. But in the area compared to no insectary, we kept the area free from flowering, and it is the same size, and it was planted by rye grass. The insectary plants uh, were planted in a five uh, feet wide and 30 feet long beds along the sides of the uh, cucumber beds. They included alfalfa, which is a perennial in this case, mainly because research has found or shown that, that alfalfa really attracts uh, the ground beetles. And then uh, sweet alyssum and fava bean and peas were used because they are, um, they have the nectar and they are early flowering plants. And so that really helps when you have these, um, what you call it, these uh, seedlings, they are flowering to attract and help more of the food availability for the beneficial insects. Similarly, uh, I use dill because it has beautiful uh, uh, yellow flowers and calendula as well and then uh, sacred or holy basil and lemon balm, marigold and sunflower. So the basis for selecting these insectary plants based on their flower structure, the size and the color, and mainly for the flowering period and the timing, because I wanted to stimulate the maximum number of beneficial insects over pest species. As I mentioned, I used uh, mixtures of annuals and perennials and the flowers that could provide pollen and nectar. I selected these insectary plants based on our climate conditions that we have here, that they can survive early spring till the end of the summer, and they have a quick establishment and not to be expensive. So, for example, when I mentioned about the flowering time, you could see like if you want to use Phacelia, it really flowers between April and September, between six to eight weeks, which is really good timing for attracting uh, insects. However, if I'm looking at dill, it flowers for a very short time. So by mixing dill with other uh, plants that they flower all the spring and the summer that will really help to keep the food available and the shelter available for these insects, especially for the beneficial insects to populate and increase in the number. This is a photo showing the cover crop, the uh, hairy vetch with the rye, where uh, when the uh, hairy vetch reaches and the rye 50% of uh, flowering, we get the roller crimper to roll it down, and it shows here it is already rolled. And that's because we want to make sure that this is compared as a reduced tillage system versus the tilt system. As you could see side by side, we have the tilt system and the reduced tilt. And then we have all the seedlings planted and I cover them with row cover because this is a project, this is a funding a funded project and I needed to make sure that I have plants alive so I can conduct the experiment over two years. So since I said that row cover could be a very helpful measure to control at least for a certain time, I left them there for about three weeks all over the seedlings and before the plants showing any flower. And that's really according to the uh, black plastic reduced tillage. And this is also showing here 
the reduced cell. And during the season, this is showing the insector strip at its uh, blooming uh, prim, uh, prime time. During the season, when the, um, the flowers started, uh, we start putting sticky cards on bamboo uh, sticks there in the middle of the uh, band, of each band. And then uh, we did that over four weeks. And then we came back and we collected these yellow sticky cards and start counting all the beneficials or the striped cucumber beetles, even the spotted cucumber beetles. And we did that after leaving the sticky cards for 48 hours. In addition, I put what is called pitfall traps. Pitfall traps, they are installed in, uh, in the middle also in all the uh, cucumber beds, also in the parameter and in the insector strips. And uh, we dug down the soil, we put a 16 ounce cups, double cups there, and uh, we cover them with a, a plastic plate here it, as a lid. And so what we did, we uh, every other week, we come on Monday, let's say, we uh, open the lid for a little uh, bit for one inch high. And then we leave it for 48 hours and then we come back and we collect what is in the cup and we count the ground beetles and we speciate them. We count the wolf spiders and we count any other spiders. So let's look have a look at the results uh, that are related to this uh, type of solution that I'm looking to solve the cucumber beetle. This is a graph where it shows uh, the uh, treatments where I have plastic mulch and this is about cucumber yield. So in the uh, Harivet try that it is covered uh, the bed with plastic and including plus insectary, it is represented by the black bar. The plastic bed of the cucumber that it is not bordered by the insectary, it is uh, showing here in dash bar. So obviously we could see that the yield of the cucumber was, the total marketable yield was really high in the uh, beds where they have insectary versus and significantly than those without the insectary. And then I looked at the premium and the seconds and here it was showing more of the premium cucumber, meaning without scars at all, that were much higher where the plants were bordered with insectary and um, they were less premium in those without the insectary and the seconds as well, they were much higher where we had the insectary. That's in the plastic mulch. Then we looked at the rolled mulch, which is reduced tillage with or without the insectary. Again, the dark uh, solid brown is where we have the mulch with the insectary. And then the dashed one is where without. Again, the same scenario, we saw more of the yield that has premium yield, no scars at all, where we have the insectary more than those without the border of the insectary. And the second, they really didn't uh, have any difference, but it was significant here where the premium really, the premium yield has been increased in both enrolled mulch as well in plastic. Uh, so we talked about the sticky cards and counting the striped cucumber beetle in year one. Uh, just to explain here the colors of the bars, the blue one, it represents the insectary itself, where we have the five feet by 30 feet insectary. This is the count of the number of striped cucumber beetle per a sticky card. The red one here, the red bar, represents the, uh, the number of the striped cucumber beetles on cucumber beds that are not surrounded by insectary. Uh, here we saw that, 
excuse me, that the beds that were surrounded with insectary, they had higher number of uh, strap cucumber beetle, unlike what we thought it would be less. And they were about 3.5 per uh, trap. Just keep that number about 3.5, 3.8. Uh, an average uh, in your uh, mind for later slide. And then we looked at the ladybug, we looked also at the pirate bugs, and they were pretty low, about 0.8 per trap for ladybug and pirate bug, uh, bug accounts 0.3 per trap. Um, we looked also by method of planting, either by plastic or rolled, and we found that there is a significance where more of the striped cucumber beetle were shown per sticky card or per trap on the plastic beds more than on the rolled beds. But none of those plants did show any bacterial world symptoms, which is pretty good. Then we looked at the ground beetles. As I mentioned, we looked at uh, sp um, wolf spiders, spiders, and ground beetle. But here I'm showing you the ground beetle counts. And we speciate them according to different uh, species. And it shows here that the majority or the dominant species was the Kalinia strike color over here, which is about 0.35. And followed by the uh, Poscillus lucublandus and the Poscillus uh, chalcitis. That's in year one. And uh, we looked at the systems themselves with insectary and without insectary in the insectary itself and the parameters where we said there are grass. You could see that there is a big amount of the ground beetles there, more than the grassy area, but uh, that's important to know that the grassy area, they have also hibernated some of these ground beetles. But when we looked with systems with insectary or no insectary, it was more, but maybe not significant, but it was more about 0.3 uh, versus 0.2. And here, keep those numbers also in mind because that's in year one, they were pretty low. And so uh, we did also another study uh, about parasitism based on the study by Smythe uh, and Hoffman. We incubated, we collected a lot of uh, beetles and we incubated them and we reared them during the incubation to see if any of those have been parasitized. And uh, yes, for sure, the the pupa came out and shattered the insect itself. And then from the pupa, we left it there to see if it will emerge any female or adult. And that's true, where we took all those pictures from these uh, incubated uh, uh, striped cucumber beetle. What this uh, graph is showing us that um, the blue bars, they are all what we collected uh, by eye and saw if anything showed any um, uh, parasitism. But maybe there is a parasitism that we don't see, and for that we used molecular analyses, and that really jumped up more the parasitism rate, and it could see here that with using molecular uh, techniques, we improved our uh, proportion of beetles that have been parasitized. Although there are no max, uh, much differences here, but that was really important for us to see if they have been parasitized. For year two, again, we saw that, remember it was in year one about 3.8, there was a huge reduction in the striped cucumber beetle. That could be due to the harsh cold winter we have, and it could be that uh, a lot of those that have uh, been uh, overwintered did not survive that harsh cold and the snow that we have in, in that year, and maybe that's why we have seen a very small amount. These represent only first generation. 
but we have seen that the ladybug uh, has jumped uh, from 0.8 to 1.2 per trap in year two and also the pirate uh, bug uh, number has jumped from 0.3 to 1. So meaning those insectaries that we left them there have really improved the population and the counts of the beneficial insects. We looked again in year two about uh, the uh, cucumber beetle uh, per trap, but Although they were pretty low uh, compared to year one, there was no significant difference in this case between plastic and roll. Again, we did not see any symptoms of any bacteria wilt on these plants in a second year. We ran also uh, the percent parasitism. And here it shows when we did the incubation, it was pretty low, but when we did the molecular, improved our uh, proportion of parasitism and showed that uh, many of those have been parasitized. We also looked at how many of those have bacterial world and only two out of the 265 they were having bacterial world as well as been parasitized. In year two, we looked again at ground beetle counts, and here you could see the same species we looked at. Some of them disappeared and didn't exist anymore, but the Kalinius tricolor really increased more than double in year two, and the Scaritis uh, increased, and uh, on the expense of the Pasilus lucublandus that decreased from year one. Again, we looked at the ground beetle per uh, method of uh, planting and with or without insectary, as well in the insectary and the parameters. You could see here the alfalfa insectary has increased a lot in, uh, in harboring ground beetles and more than the grassy area. But not only that, it really increased uh, about 10 times uh, in year two, the ground beetle population. And you could see that mostly uh, there is no significant difference between uh, the systems, but it looked like uh, the plastic harbored more uh, of these uh, ground beetles than the, the rolled ones. So in summary, um, I would say, that the inclusion of insectary strips increased premium marketable yield in both in the plastic and in the um, in the with the insectary mainly, but uh, over the ones without insectary. Although the plants in the uh, plastic were much uh, fruitful, uh, the rolled crimped uh, beds have less yield and that's because in this experiment we wanted to start with a system that does not have any uh, outside or outside input such as amendment like compost or fertilizer. We wanted to see the system itself how it really reacts when we till the cover crop versus when we rolled it. The cucumber beds with insectary had greater counts of striped cucumber beetle in year one out of two years and increased ground beetle counts and there was no significant difference between parasitism in both years. When we looked at systems, if it has any impact when we do the reduced till versus plastic, again, we found that more of the striped cucumber beetle counts were in um, in the plastic mulch uh, in one of the years over the two years and more of the ground beetle counts in the plastic mulch than in the uh, rolled crimped reduced till system. Over time, over the two years, the beneficial insects counts jumped a lot and increased and in both years we did not see any symptoms of plant wilting and that could be due to the season and it could be that the management practices of the incorporation of insectaries as plus as the uh, parasitism 
and the increase of beneficial insects altogether could have played a role in uh, showing that symptom or that plants to be infected by the uh, the um, striped cucumber beetle. One thing we wanted to know, what if these striped cucumber beetles are there, but they are not infected with the bacterial wilt uh, uh, pathogen that caused the, uh, the disease? And that's why in the molecular uh, techniques, we also assessed for whether these have been infected by the Erwinia and uh, some of them, but very low number, were found to be infected by the, <coughs> excuse me, by the uh, Erwinia trachyphyla. <coughs> so the take home message here, using the holistic integrated system, biological and cultural, could improve the marketable premium yield of cucumbers tremendously, could uh, help increase the beneficial insects counts over time, especially when you have the insector strip uh, available for longer than one year to keep it there for two or three years. Uh, the ground beetle, for sure, the counts have increased over time and led to a reduction of a striped cucumber beetle in year two, maybe maybe could have led to that reduction because we know from previous research that these ground beetles and uh, wolf spiders could feed on the larvae, could be feeding on the eggs, and could be feeding on the adults themselves of the striped cucumber beetle. Also, uh, we found the system have helped to have uh, uh, parasites such as the technet fly, also, we found the braconoid uh, wasps uh, stuck to the yellow sticky cards. So we also found not only the system helped in, in bringing in the wasp, but also the technet fly. And those uh, caused parasitism was mainly due to the technet fly, and they could have played a role in reducing the cucumber beetle counts. None of the plants that was uh, planted uh, during the two years showed any wilting or succumb to bacteria wilt, which was really uh, interesting because the, the close by fields that they did not have any uh, insectary around them or they have been always practiced with uh, plastic mulch have shown uh, wilting and plants um, uh, have been uh, affected and uh, the, the the plants died and uh, were not able to to get a premium yield out of it. Uh, these practices uh, deemed to be helpful and can be integrated into an IPM program if you would like to use it or in organic system to control uh, striped cucumber beetle. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, Dr. Joe Engerson Mahar from Rutgers University, who helped in uh, and assisting us in uh, speciating uh, the ground beetles. He, he is uh, his expertise is ground beetles, so. We were looking at all the beetles that we have collected and speciate them and count them. Also, uh, Dr. Andrew Smith and Tara Valentine, previously known as Katon, last name. She just recently got married. And so they uh, worked on the molecular uh, techniques. And uh, Emily Lesher for uh, collecting all these non-easy flying striped cucumber beetles and put them in jars and rearing them and give them food, uh, leaves and water and taking care of them. Many thanks for her and many, many thanks for all the research interns who helped during the two years and the farm operation team who made this work coming pretty nicely. 
I just want to bring to your attention also that we have uh, more of uh, in, uh, published uh, uh, educational uh, either a, fact, a field guide or a fact sheet or a web article and these are all posted on Rodale Institute website. For example, uh, out of this work, I published a field guide step-by-step step about how we control the striped cucumber beetle with insectary straps, with, with photos, with graphs, with data, that really it would be interesting. It is already posted on our website. Another fact sheet dedicated to ground beetles. These are the worries on your farm. Uh, two articles. One is related uh, how you choose your insectary plants, how you plant them and uh, take care of them to, and what insects you want to uh, attract and what pests you really want to uh, uh, have these uh, beneficial insects to attack. Another article based on the research we did on parasitism and using molecular uh, analyses, this web article is also posted there on the website. I think these are uh, information would help in addition to this webinar to keep and read, and uh, they are very easy to understand. And with that, um, I thank you all for attending and listening to this webinar. And here is my contact information. Uh, this is my email here, uh, gladys.zinati at rodaleinstitute.org, and my phone number 610 683 1402. I also invite you to come to our uh, field days that occur every third, of, uh, third week of, in July where we showcase all our research and we talk about uh, results and what we do and the equipment we use. I will encourage you to come and visit Rodale Institute at that time and see what we are doing. And for more information, I listed here the link for you where you can look for more webinars uh, of what has been done before and what is coming in 2020. And with that, I will uh, look for questions for you from Will. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zanati, for sharing your research uh, with us today. We have uh, quite a number of questions already. We're going to take about 15 minutes. Uh, if you have not posed one of the questions that you would like to ask yet, feel free to do that in the question boxes. First question is, I noticed that certain cucumber types attract the beetle more so than others, such as the Armenian cucumber was inundated with beetles while other cucumber varieties were not as bothered. Is there a list of vegetable varieties that are less attractive to the beetle? Um, what we did here in this experiment, we found that Ministro is, um, is a very good uh, uh, cucumber for slicing and then uh, we realized also when we put uh, market more, market more was more attracting for the uh, beetles. But I could say that if the Armenian uh, cucumber is attracting more, that could be because of the cucurbitacin. It's a chemical in the leaves uh, that could be uh, attracting more of those uh, striped cucumber beetles because what happens usually when uh, one of those striped cucumber beetles detects there is a good source of cucurbitacin, they will uh, emit pheromones that cause the aggregation. And so in that case, they will call other striped cucumber beetles to come over and here we have a very good source of cucurbitacin. Now they require this cucurbitacin for their energy, for, uh, for population, for making more of themselves. And so this gives them excitement. And so I could expect that if the Armenian variety is like the gourd that we talked about, is attracting more, that could be because of the cucurbitacin in it. Great, thank you. Um, another question was, what was the distance between the different treatments? 
the distance between the different treatments, they're about 30 feet away. I would say that it would help if you have beyond 40 or 50 when you compare that, but we were limited to the size of the land that we had to do the experiment. Great. Uh, another question is, we are organic growers in California. We use insectary plants on a large scale and have found them effective in attracting wasps and other parasitizing insects. For cucumber beetle, we have found kaolin clay and diatomaceous earth to be highly effective in deterring cucumber beetle feeding on plants and fruit. Have you any experience with these products? They may not work well in areas that get repeated rain events that may wash them off. You answered the question. In fact, we have uh, seen growers using these um, um, chemicals that are only uh, proved, but because we are in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of rain and uh, we found that it would be more effective if we look into methods that really helps us into uh, using biological and other cultural practices that could help reducing uh, the cucumber beetle. I am happy to hear that in California, people have been implementing the insector strips as well. Uh, but we have used uh, the canola for uh, apples, in fact, and it proved to be good because you know it is one time harvest versus the cucumber that you really need to keep adding every time and every week and you need to harvest it. Great, thank you. Um, similarly related to the distance is another question about that. Was any thoughts on the distance between the insectary strips? Okay, so what I did is that I put the beds uh, bordered uh, with insector strips so it was equal uh, equal distance so i will reduce the variability for example uh, the distance between the insector strip and the bed itself it was about five feet uh five to seven feet it depends you can uh, have that but the beds they are equally uh, uh what you call it distant and equally bordered by the insector strip i know one of the researchers uh but not on cucumber they have done some work where they looked if you uh, put an insectary on one side and multiple beds and they found the farther you go from the insectary the less uh impact is having and and that's because some of those uh, beneficial insects, they love to stay in, in the area where there is food, there is shelter, there is nectar, and rearing uh, and having the egg masses there and their larvae. And so the, it is easier for them to go and back and they prefer to be as closer to those beds, close to the insectary rather than those that are maybe eight or 12 uh, beds away from the insectary itself. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, was there any weed management in the insectary strips, particularly in regards to the perennials, alfalfa, lemon balm, etc.? In the insectary, we did one time hand weeding because it was uh, an issue of having some of the early, early um, weeds coming as well as uh the ones that they start making pollens there so we didn't want them to be interfering and uh all what we did is that mowing around it especially after we collect the data uh so we do not do any uh equipment use or any mowing when we set up the uh, the experiment for taking data on the sticky cards or on the uh, pitfalls. Uh, other than mowing and one time hand weeding, that's all what we did for the insectary. At the beginning, it would be difficult to establish, but in the second year was really easy. 
All right. Uh, another question. Could you explain the original versus assisted parasitism? I can't remember if those were the correct terms, but this was referenced in one of the slides. Yes. Uh, original is based on what uh, we counted by I. Original meaning that we rear them in the, uh, in the lab under controlled temperature and then uh, we take them out and then we looked if they uh, have shown any death or they are alive, if they have shown any uh, parasitism, in that case it's called original, meaning we will see either the shattering of the cucumber beetle or we see the uh, pupa coming out and we count them or we see also the technet fly itself. So we, that's what we call original. Then when those that we saw dead, but, or still alive, because we had them for about three weeks, we wanted to know whether they also carry the, um, the DNA of the uh, parasite itself, because of course we are not going to dissect each one and look under the microscope. DNA molecular techniques are much better these days to use, although tedious, but it is easier when you have multiple number of hundreds. And so these were the ones that we call them uh, the adjusted or the modified based on the original. Great, thank you, Dr. Zanati. Uh, that's all the questions we have right now. I'm gonna take 30 seconds or so um, to have a couple more questions roll in. If anyone has them, feel free to pose them. I hope that uh, the information here uh, will really help our organic growers and help the growers who uh, invest in IPM uh, control measures for cucurbits or for, it could be that the insector strips can be used even for other uh, pests that they want to, uh, to control. They can uh, change the type of the plants they want to attract best the beneficials that they really want to attack the pests that they are looking at. Great. Yes, thank you. All right, uh, with that, I think um, that is all the questions that we have for today. In that case, I will just wrap up very quickly. Um, I would just like to say thank you so much to Dr. Zanati for joining us and sharing her research with us um, about these insectary strips. Uh, hopefully, they will, hopefully they will be of benefit to, to growers uh, that are listening in and um, remember that these videos will be posted, the webinar will be available for listening in at a later date uh, for those that were not able to make it today. Wrapping up, if you have any questions, ideas, comments, or concerns, feel free to email me, wfullwider at ipminstitute.org and look out for a follow-up email that will be coming out tomorrow with the link for the evaluation as well um, as some more information about CEUs and the uh, videos of recording of this webinar. With that, uh, final thank you to Dr. Zanati uh, and to you all for listening in. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Safe start. Bye-bye.